So there's this super simple technique to make incredibly tender, super soft dinner rolls. It doesn't require any special skill and it takes very little time. The best part about this is that those rolls stay tender for days. Tongjong is a Japanese method for baking bread that takes a percentage of the flour and the liquid in a recipe and makes sort of a cooked paste much like a roux. The mixture is then cooled and added to the rest of the ingredients when you make your dough. Now something magical happens in that process. Well, you know that cooked paste? It pre-gelatinizes the starches in the flour and that makes them more able to retain and trap liquid. That makes for a super soft bread and it definitely extends the shelf life. An added benefit, you can work with higher hydration doughs that actually feel drier than they really are. So I'm gonna apply this technique to make perfectly plush dinner rolls. This is a same day recipe, so you can prepare the rolls at lunch and have them ready to go for dinner. Or better yet, make them a few days ahead of time and have them ready for later in the week. All right, the first thing we need to do is make our tongzhong. That's a really simple process. Go ahead and grab 190 grams or six and two thirds ounces of whole milk. Pour that in a sauce pot along with 38 grams or one and a third ounces of all purpose flour. Now get some medium heat under that pot and whisk the mixture until the flour is totally incorporated into the milk with little to no lumps. As your tongzhong heats up, you're gonna to wanna to stir it occasionally just to make sure things aren't sticking to the bottom of your pot. Once the mixture hits 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 66 degrees Celsius, the starches in the flour will gelatinize and your tongzhong will thicken up. Now transfer the mixture to a bowl and cover the tongzhong with some plastic film. That's just to make sure that it doesn't form a skin while it's cooling off. Put the bowl aside and grab your KitchenAid because now it's time to start mixing our dough. Grab the rest of your flour, which should be about 507 grams or 18 ounces, and add that to the mixing bowl. Next, add three quarters of a teaspoon of instant dry yeast, along with 42 grams or one and a half ounces of sugar, and 15 grams or about a half an ounce of kosher salt. Now, I recommend pre-mixing the dry ingredients just to evenly distribute the yeast and seasoning throughout that flour. Then, just go straight in with a tongzhong, which should be about at room temperature by now. This recipe calls for more room temp milk instead of using water. So add 220 grams or seven and three quarter ounces to the bowl, then mix it on low speed with the dough hook attachment. On a KitchenAid, that's about setting three. Once the dough comes together, stop mixing, cover that bowl and let the dough rest for 20 minutes. What I'm doing here closely resembles a step in baking called auto lease. It allows the flour to fully hydrate and it jump starts gluten formation which reduces the kneading time and it makes for a more workable dough. Once that dough's rested, start kneading it again, but this time on medium speed. Cut the butter into four or five pieces and add them one at a time into the bowl. Now this is important, wait for a piece to be totally incorporated into the dough before adding the next piece. This should take five or six minutes, then stop the mixer and check the dough. It should be slightly firm and have a sheen to it from the addition of butter. Turn it out onto a flat work surface, making sure not to leave any dough behind, and with both hands, begin working the dough in a circular motion as I'm doing here. It's important to apply a little bit of pressure on the sides of the ball, not downward pressure, just from the side. Eventually, the dough ball will begin to tighten up and get nice and smooth. Grab a large bowl, lightly oil the inside, then carefully add the dough. Cover the bowl with something like some foil or a plastic film or some type of proofing cover like the one you see here. Now this recipe is a lunch to dinner sort of timeline, but there's a few things you can do to either speed up or slow down the process. For a faster rise, you can place your dough in the oven, turned off of course, but with the oven light on. This is a warmer environment, so it's gonna speed up the fermentation process. But for a slower rise and improved flavor, go ahead and place your dough in your refrigerator overnight. Whatever path you decide to take, just make sure the dough is doubled in size and then turn it out onto a work surface. This step requires a kitchen scale to accurately and evenly cut the dough into smaller dinner roll sized portions. Each piece should weigh somewhere between 65 and 70 grams each. And in the end, you should have 15 pieces of soft yeasty dough. Cover the pieces with a damp towel, and this prevents them from drying out while you shape each dough ball. Now, grab a piece and pat it a few times to release some of the gas. This step makes it easier to form the dough. Now, using one hand, roll the dough in a circular motion while applying a little bit of pressure around the perimeter. Don't press down on the dough, though. See, this technique is kind of hard to describe, but I think you'll understand what I'm saying once you give it a try. For this recipe, I'm using a 9 by 13 inch rectangular pan and it's the perfect size for this amount of dough. 
You can totally use a different size though. Just scale the recipe accordingly. I've left some simple instructions on how to do this in the description box below the video. Place the dough balls in rows, leaving a little bit of space in between each one for expansion. In this pan, I get three rows across and five down. Cover the pan with a damp towel and let the dough proof at room temp for close to an hour, or at least until the balls have about doubled in size. The next step is to brush them with egg wash. Just take an egg, whisk it up really well, then carefully brush the surface of the dough with it. Don't go too heavy here. A nice thin coating is perfect. At this point, have the oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That would be 177 degrees in Celsius. Place the pan on the middle rack and bake the rolls for 25 to 30 minutes. Now remember to rotate the pan halfway through just to make sure the rolls are cooked evenly. When done, they should be beautifully golden brown with a ballpark internal temp of about 195 degrees Fahrenheit or 88 degrees Celsius. Pop them out of the pan and onto a baking rack. If you don't have one, just pull one of your racks from the oven and prop it up with a few cups. That'll do the trick. Now, cover the rolls with a dry kitchen towel and let them rest for about 10 minutes. Just a quick note on storage. If you plan on baking the rolls ahead of time, just let them cool off completely, then place them in a covered container or wrap them in foil and place them in your refrigerator. And just like any other bread on this planet, if you leave the rolls out and uncovered, they're gonna dry up a lot faster. Now let's take a look at the inside of these delicious looking rolls. Now I'll admit that this batch caught a bit too much color around the edges and the bottom. So keep that in mind and adjust your oven accordingly if the same happens to you. Would you look at that rise? I mean, it's picture perfect. And the inside of these rolls is so ridiculously tender. I mean, <laughs> there's some great recipes out there, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, this one is gonna be hard to beat. I'm sure some viewers will have questions about the steps involved here. So hit me in the comments below and I promise I'll do my best to respond in a timely manner. Thanks so much for watching and supporting my channel. Take it easy.